Okay, we are officially recording now. So I am going to share my screen again. All right. So um, Jack can't cook. Uh-oh. So who are Cook Scholars? So the Jack Kent Cook Scholars um, are students who, who apply and are selected for uh, the Jack Kent College. 69% attend highly competitive colleges and universities. So that means that a lot of the students who are looking for this scholarship are going to selective enrollment schools or Ivy League schools. Um, so very competitive, very uh, upper echelon students, which you guys fall into that category. So uh, we're, we're going to talk about that. Uh, as we go on and what what kind of schools you're looking to actually apply to. Um, the average GPA is a 3.84 and then 93% give back through civic or community service during their community college um, tenure. So um, I'm hoping that you know you guys have some volunteer information if volunteer experience if you have not that's one of the things that they do look for um, for Jack Kent, Jack Kent Cook Scholars. Um, the, the Cook Undergraduate Transfer Scholarship. Uh oh, sorry. I have all these windows on my own. Okay. Um, the, the Cook Undergraduate uh, Transfer Scholarship is a highly selective scholarship for the nation's top community college students seeking to complete their bachelor's degree at a four year institution. Uh, the, the scholarship includes up to $40,000 per year to attend a four-year accredited undergraduate school. And that will they will cover that for two to three years. So after you finish your associate degree here, you could then have your, uh, your, your, your uh, bachelor's degree covered for up to three years if you uh, are selected at the Jack King Cook Scholar. Um, your ability to pursue any area of study, so it's not specific to you know STEM or nursing or education, you can pick any major as long as you're going to, um, as, long as, as long as you're selected as, as a scholar. You also receive personal advising and selected, uh, selected a school and navigate financial aid. So we're, that's what we're gonna help you with through this process. But you, if you are selected as a scholar, you'll also get some hands-on uh, touch points from the actual foundation um, through your tenure at, at the uh, bachelor's degree. Uh, at the bachelor's institution. And then again, there's some advising that, um, that, that helps to maximize your student experience. So eligibility, the eligibility requirements are one that you are a current student at a, a current student at an accredited community college, which the City Colleges of Chicago is an accredited institution with at least sophomore status as of January 1st, 2021. Everyone selected for this um, this workshop had at least 30 hours or more, so you guys definitely fit into that criteria. Um, you have to plan to enroll full time at a bachelor's degree seeking seeking a bachelor's degree at accredited college or university in the fall of 2021. So that means between uh, spring and summer, you would be completing your associate degree and then going on to a four year institution for fall 21. You do have to have a cumulative GPA of a 3.5 or higher. Um, and then you do have to demonstrate unmet financial needs. Basically, that just means that your family income, um, that, I mean, if you qualify for financial aid, um, and, and it can go up to at least a household of $95,000. So that's pretty generous. Um, uh, and then you cannot have any previous enrollment at, an, at another four-year institution. Now, that was one thing I was not able to qualify with students. So if there's any student here uh, that is attending city colleges, uh, attempting to go for the Jack Kent Cook Scholarship, you would not be eligible if you have previously uh, enrolled at another four-year institution. So if you have any transfer credit, you would not be um, eligible to apply. So the program goals of the Jack Kent Cook Scholar, their goals is really to um, have scholars that are attending uh, some of the best colleges and universities in the United States. So um, we're going to, again, we're going to talk about that. Uh, I'm specifically through Kennedy King College. We have had students that have made it to the semifinals 
through um, the city colleges, through, through not from Kennedy King, but through the district, we have had some students that, uh, that were selected as finalists. Um, and one of the things that we noticed is that they were students who were going to uh, selective enrollment or Ivy League schools. I just wanna take a moment. Um, uh, another one of the program goals is to um, really help those students who have a, a need or a desire to go on for graduate school. They wanna get help, help get you prepared and get you in the mindset uh, uh, for postgraduate opportunities and connect with other like-minded students and mentors who can support that academic success. So this is something that if you, um, you know, if you're selected, if you go through this process, you're kind of, you're in a uh, community of, of, uh, of mentors, peers, and, and uh, institutions that uh, would, uh, would stress that level of, of, of scholarship. I want to take a moment. I also invited, let me get back to my full screen really quickly. Um, I invited uh, uh, our faculty advisor for PTK. Uh, most students here, uh, well, all students here have a 3.5 or higher and have a 3.5 or higher. And, um, you know, we, we encourage you to join PTK. Uh, that is the Honor Society. Um, and this is the PTK advisor from Kennedy King College, Dr. Davis. Um, and so, Dr. Davis, did you want to say a couple words? Yes, yes. Hello, hello. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Um, so, yeah, just hello, everybody. Uh, just very briefly, uh, again, uh, my name's uh, Davis, uh, Professor Davis. I'm in the social sciences, social and behavioral sciences department. I primarily teach Africana studies, and um, I'm one of two uh, advisors for PTK. So um, I'm going to be, uh, I guess, assisting with this program. Um, serving as a resource to help you through the scholarship application process. So um, I don't know if you've already received my email address. Uh, I guess I can leave it's it. It's in the presentation. Okay, it's in the presentation. Okay, good. So yeah, feel free to reach out um, and I can just help when I can. I'm kind of learning more about this as you are. Um, um, so, I, but I will be uh, here to help. Um, I've obviously been through similar things myself, my own personal experiences and helped other students in a similar way. So uh, good luck to everybody. I hope you do participate. As Dr. Williams has explained it to me, it's a great uh, opportunity. So uh, please feel free to reach out. And Dr. Davis, just so you know, I know um, initially we were uh, doing, we were conducting this workshop for Kennedy King College students. We do have students from across the district uh, oh, present today. Okay. So, okay. Um, okay. so myself and Dr. Davis are um, the primary leads for Kennedy King College, and we're here to assist. Um, there are um, I can get you information for the other transfer directors and, and the PTK, um, the PTK advisors on that campus. However, uh, one of the things that we want to do as, as, uh, as uh, Jack can cook scholars or, you know, going for this scholarship, we really encourage students to um, apply to PTK because that, that is one of the things that the, the scholarship looks for is that you have um, some, some academic service, some community service. So joining PTK would definitely uh, uh, meet, check that box and get that noticed. Yes, yes. Um, and to that point, um, we're going to be, um, actually my, my uh, partner, um, I think if she didn't send them last week, we'll be sending them within the next couple of days, actually, um, invites for those that have already been identified as eligible. Uh, the college sends us a list as advisors and then we send out the email invite to those uh, that meet the qualifications, a 3-5 GPA. Uh, but, but I think, yeah, but you do have to be, uh, KKC has to be your primary institution though. Um, right, and so, so yeah, and we'll work, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, you said what? And we'll work with those students and those KKC students if you're interested in PTK and you're going for the Jack Ken Cook style of myself and Dr. Davis would, uh, would work with you. But again, I can get you contact information so that if you are not a member of PTK and you're at another campus, we can get you information so you can get that same um, assistance kind of getting through this process on your campus. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So thank you, Dr. Davis. I, I know you have to sometimes have to run out for, I know, for I'm zipping, I'm zipping. I know I just ended a class and now I'm going to, another, but yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm so thank you. To listen in some too though. Until okay. I, thank you. But yeah, thank you. All right. All right. So we talked about the program goals and as you can see, um, we really want to get a, we, the, the, the scholarship is looking for a well-rounded student, not only that you, um, are academically, uh, 
excellent, but that you, you, you're also giving back to the community. You are supporting your um, academic achievements. So why, um, so getting back to the uh, PTK and, and selective enrollment institutions, um, selective enrollment ins institutions consider more than, than just the GPA. While you need a higher, while you need a higher, I'm sorry, I keep going through, keep hitting this by mistake. Uh, while you need a higher than average GPA, uh, these schools also look for extracurricular activities such as PTK, community service, and other activities um, as, part of, uh, as part of your entry. So um, we are going to, I wanted to introduce um, you guys to some selective enrollment institutions as you're considering colleges that you want to transfer to. Um, and I pulled up a list of those schools in Illinois. Uh, the, the complete list is a 22 page list and it's, it has selective enrollment schools across the nation. But I, I wanted to highlight those in Illinois because I know that most of our students are looking to, um, are looking to you know, stay in the local area. Um, so I would, I would strongly recommend that one of, the, one of the schools that you at least apply to be a selective enrollment school um, you don't necessarily have to select that school ultimately, right? Um, if it's not a good fit for you, um, I'm recommending that we at least have three to five schools that we're applying to. Um, and one of those schools I, I would think would you would want to have as a, as a selective enrollment or Ivy League school so that you, um, you know, if that's in your, if, if you're considering that or if you want to consider that, I think that would make you more likely um, uh, uh, to be selected as, as a scholar. Um, and so just wanted to, sometimes um, one of the big things is, you know, does a Ivy League or a selective enrollment school fit me, right? Um, so I wanted to, I, I just compiled a couple things so that we can consider uh, selective enrollment schools and some, some factors to consider. So selective uh, colleges invest more money per student than non-selective schools. So those schools are usually more expensive. Not only are they uh, more rigorous to, to uh, be accepted, but they usually cost more money. However, um, per student expenditures for selective schools are is ninety two thousand per ninety two thousand dollars per student, whereas per student expen expenditures at less expensive schools is a mere twelve thousand dollars. Right, so that means resources that you know they're spending more money on you as a student to kind of um, assist you with your educational pursuits. The cost of attendance, and this is something that I actually learned. Um, Many times attending a, an Ivy League or selective school can be less out of pocket than selective schools. So, um, than, than less selective schools. Um, let's go to this website. It is called the College Scorecard and it's, it's provided by the federal government. Can everybody see that? The new screen I just put up is called College Scorecard. Does everybody see it? Yeah. Just make sure. Okay, great. So. Um, one of the things that I, I found out, and let's put in an Ivy League school. Um, let's put in Cornell. Okay. Um, and as we're researching school, we want to start looking to see, um, you know, what's important to you. I always tell students to rank it by price, location, and, and program. But since we're talking about Ivy League schools, we're looking at price and lo or location and price. So um, as long as that, that school has your, your, um, your major, it could be a, a potential fit for you. But one of the things that this scorecard um, actually uh, allows you to do is see what the average cost is. The average out-of-pocket cost, out of, uh, cost is $27,000 for Cornell. Now let's look at a less selective school and see Well, is that the Cornell you were looking for? It looks like this Cornell is Iowa. Oh, that's not okay. No, that's not the one I'm looking for. Then hold on, let me go back. Okay, yeah, I thought so. I'm like, yeah, I, know the I didn't look at it all. Okay, so this yeah, one, I, but just so just so we can see, I'll, I'll look at another one. But this one, the um. Af uh, the average annual cost is 14000 which is the one I put in. I thought that was what I put in before. It may have been. You put in Cornell College instead of Cornell University. University. I don't think it came up. That's why I thought it was just that one. Oh, there it is. There we go. 
So the average out-of-pocket out of cost for uh, Cornell University is $30,000. Um, and then for Eastern, I think it was, was it 14 or 24? 14,000. It was 14,000. So not a big difference when we talk about the difference between an Ivy League education and then a less selective, a less selective school. Not that Eastern isn't a good school. It's just I'm I'm only showing this to you because sometimes uh you know students believe that an Ivy League education is out of their range in terms of in terms of um, price. And you know twenty four thousand dollars is, is actually comparable to a UIC or um and who is that Tiana? Was that you Tiana that chimed in? No, I didn't say anything. Oh, okay. I thought that was right your here. Okay. okay, I did see you. Um, but I I wanted you to co-sign it. That's that's pretty. That's not a big difference between. I mean, college is expensive in itself. But um, when we when you talk when most students think about Ivy League education, they're thinking you know the cost. But those costs, those schools can offset their costs with their endowments and other things that they can use to actually support support um, students that you know have a financial need. Um, better than less selective schools. So um, it's not out of reach. And that's, that's really what I want, wanted to show you. Um, you, can, you can actually use this scorecard and look at different, uh, different institutions and what the average um, annual cost or the out-of-pocket cost would be. Um, so let's go back to the presentation. Okay. Um, and then just some educational benefits. Again, they spend more, the, the per student expenditure is, is much more at a, a Ivy League or a selective enrollment school, meaning that you have more resources, better uh, equipment. Um, and so that, that, you know, that kind of equals out. And then the income and career benefits. In the long run, students are exposed to important and influential networks geared toward graduate school internships and employment opportunities. Um, and again, you can kind of, from the scorecard, it will tell you what the expected uh, as, a, as a result of attending those schools, what the expected um, uh, career, what you can expect to earn after uh, receiving a degree from that, from that school. Um, okay, so I want to, before we get to this slide, I want to actually show you guys the, the slide, the, I must have to stop share, hold on a second. And I'm going to have to share this. Okay, so this is um, this is provided by Jack King Cook, but basically it gives you a list of schools and um, their selective schools, and it, it ranks it from one to three, being uh, most competitive to very competitive. And I would like you to start researching these schools so that we can kind of compile a list. Um, and again, you know, you may have your list of schools that you uh, before attending this workshop that you wanted to go to, whether UIC, something that, you know, in, in Chicago or downstate Illinois, I would just consider or want you to consider one of these selective enrollment schools as an option for yourself. So if we go down to um, Illinois, uh-oh, the PDF, there it is. These are the schools in Illinois, which we which are considered selective enrollment or uh, uh, or selective enrollment schools. So I would I would say it's worth a, a try to you know look at the scorecard, look these schools up, and kind of see if they could be a potential um, option for you. We can actually you know if you want to you know make an appointment, drop in to my walk-in hours. We can talk about these schools, but I really would I think it's worth it to have one of these on your. Um, on if, if it can be a fit for you to, you know, have one of these schools on your application along with your uh, sponsorship, your membership in, in PTK. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to get to the application components. Now this, this uh, workshop, we're really just going over an overview of the, of the application process, what it means to be a Jack, Jack Kent Scholar, and, um, you know, just introducing you to the scholarship itself. The next workshop that we have, we're actually going to jump into uh, applying for the scholarship.
So, um, but these are the, the scholarship components. These would be the areas that you would have to complete. Um, so you would, you would fill in the eligibility requirements, which that shouldn't be a problem for anybody. Uh, short essays, I do plan to have someone, uh, either myself or someone talk about, um, you know, components of a, a good um, essay. Experience and achievement, again, hopefully, you know, you have some, uh, uh, some one could be PTK, but uh, some experience and achievements that you can list. Um, your college plans, uh, you know, detailing what schools you'd like to go to, your household finances, family contacts, waivers and conditions, and then you also need two letters of recommendation. So we definitely want to start working on those, okay? Um, the deadline for the scholarship is January 6, 2021 at 12 o'clock. So we have from October, now this is October to January 6 to uh, get through all the components of the application. Now, how many scholars are awarded each year? That number varies. Um, last year, there were 50 scholars that were, were selected. So we're, we're hoping, you know, that we can get at least one person from each campus, uh, you know, if not a finalist selected for the Jack King Cook Scholarship this year. So we're really gonna try to work together, work hard. We're, this is a community um, and we wanna support you through uh, this application process. So I encourage you to attend the workshops. I encourage you to, you know, right away start uh, looking for letters of recommendation, uh, lining those up. I would also encourage you to start researching the schools. I am going to say you need at least three to five schools that you want to um, apply to. Consider a selective enrollment um, uh, school. We talked about some of the reasons why you would wanna do that. Um, and then we're gonna just, we're gonna actually jump into, you know, some scholarship, the actual application the next time that we meet. Um, I, I'm here to help. We're here to help myself and Dr. Davis. Again, we are the representatives on the campus of Kennedy King College um, that uh, would assist you with, uh, with the application process. Our contact information is there. I even leave my Google number. You can uh, leave me a message there and I can, you know, we can, I can get back to you. Um, we can set up an appointment. I do have walk-in hours as well. And then I will also recommend that you consult the Jack Kent Cook uh, website as well. That's the website address. Um, a lot of this information that uh, I've given today is, um, is, is, is from the website. So there's, there's a, a wealth of information out there. Um, and I, I want to encourage each and every one of you guys, you, you know, you've already demonstrated that you have the rigor to, um, you know, to, um, to attend a, a, a selective enrollment school, an Ivy League school, and if that is what you want to do, we're here to help you. Um, if you know, if it's if, if whatever school that you want to uh, uh, to enter, we're going to help you do that. But I, again, I would encourage you to have one at least one selective enrollment school. Tiana, did you uh, want to have any? Did you have anything? Tiana McCann is our uh, is a transfer center director at Olive Harvey College. Um, I think we had one. Did we have one Olive Harvey student? I know Barbara is. Okay, yeah, I thought we had a, a, a Olive Harvey student, so we do have OH in the house. Yeah. Um, but did you have any 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 uh, information that you wanted to impart in terms of Jack King Cook? Um, I guess I'm not. I'm, I unfortunately missed the first couple of minutes because I had an appointment, and I don't know if you already covered it in regards to the outside credit hours, outside of um, city colleges. City colleges. Yeah, we did. I, 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 I let them know. That. Yes. I, yeah. I, I often have to stress that. I think that people think, oh, well, I'm not using those credits or that didn't count, but it, it does. <laughs> and yeah. You cannot apply. So just making sure um, that people are reminded of that. Yep. Yeah. And, so and that it is a very tedious and very long application. But if it was easy, everybody would win it and That's it would be. It would just be that. So just know that it will take time and that um, you need to be ready, ready for the time commitment. We're grateful this year that they pushed the deadline back to January, probably in this virtual setting and made life a little bit easier to extend that deadline. So just start working at it and picking at it now. Yeah, and that's, we are here to help. That's what, that's mm -hmm. exactly. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we, we know that this process is tedious um, and, and it's a lot of work and, you know, we want students to be selected. So that's why, you know, we're, you know, putting in those little nuggets of things that we think that you should actually um, consider uh, PTK for sure. Um, and uh, to, you know, making yourself a more viable candidate. You're already a viable candidate, but um, when you're competing with, you know, 
students across the country, you know, we we want to stand out as, as much as we can. The um, only other thing I was going to say is one thing I highly encourage people to do before they even say that they need help, which we're we're assuming that most will want at least another set of eyes to look over the application, which makes yeah. sense. You know, and actually, I would say more than one set. I would say get a professor uh, to look over some things. Then again, your director of transfer and things of that nature, obviously scheduling an appointment. Don't think that this is ever a walk-in type of appointment. This uh, is a little bit more timely, so you definitely want to schedule it. And please take the time to create the account and read through the application before even coming in so that you can at least familiarize yourself with what other materials are going to be required of you with this particular application. For example, you know, they're looking for financial stuff. So be ready to ask your parents or be ready to have your financial stuff in a row. You know, they're looking for letters of recommendation. Look to see how many, look to see how many questions and essays are on there. So you can at least be a little bit more familiar. So then when you're coming in to ask the questions, you feel like, it is of substance, like you're getting something from the actual appointment and not us together just looking at the application. So I'm not saying, you know, you can always save it and submit when it's time. Uh, you can just save and come back to it when uh, you're ready to apply and to send. So that is one of the things I say, look over the application first. That's a good point. Um, the good thing about this application is that you can work on it little by little. So once you, you know, create your account, you can go on and there, there are like four different sections. You can go on and complete half of one today and then work on four tomorrow. So you, you, it's really something that you can kind of plug away. You can chip away at um, the components of the application little by little by little. Um, some is going to be really easy, the eligibility. Maybe the short essay is easy for you. Those will be easy. Um, the two letters of recommendation, start working on those now so that you'll, you know, the whoever you're asking to write those letters has time and, and you want to give them time to actually complete the letters of recommendation for you. Um, I did want to let you know, this is, like I said, this is a workshop series. So the next workshop that we have will be November 11th at 1.30. You will, I am going to email everyone who attended today and you'll get the, you'll get this PowerPoint presentation. Um, and, you know, you, you, you do have the email that has the links to each, the, the last two workshops. You can actually go on and register yourself today for those last two uh, workshops. Um, but the third workshop is going to be uh, no, uh, December 3rd. So between now, roughly, a, you know, a month, and another month from now, you'll come back. Hopefully, you, you, you know, you have researched your schools, you got the schools you want. Um, you can even go on and start trying to look at the application if you if you like, but we're going to actually jump into the application the next the next time that we meet. Um, so if do we have any questions, I'm going to check the chat, see if we had any questions. What are the eligibility eligibility requirements? We talked about that. You do have to be a sophomore um, in 2021, which you all should be. Uh, and it's the application deadline is uh, January 6th at midnight. And yes, this is recorded. Thank you. Um, where do you access the application? The application is actually on the Jack Kent Cook workshop, or I'm sorry, the uh, website. And I did include the website in the presentation. So you can jump on and start trying to, it's, it's actually the Common App. I'm not sure if anyone has worked with the Common App, but the Common App is a generalized application where you uh, submit your that one application to a number of schools. So the schools that you are interested in should be listed in that application, and they would all get a copy of your um, of your uh, your your uh, your scholarship. Hey, Tiana, one quick question. In terms of uh, fee waivers, we would still submit those for students, right? We will. Um, to be honest with you, quite a few schools have waived them in this season. Yeah. So you definitely want to check first. So yes, so we would still submit. Yeah, and we'll talk about fee waivers the next time we meet because that's when we'll jump into the, the uh, application. But um, as you're completing these uh, these applications, you will see fees attached to the, the actual application. And, and as Tiana said, some schools have been waiving those fees, but if not, they will expect you to, they, they will expect you to, um, 
to pay an application fee if you are not given a waiver. So we want to make sure that we are asking for those waivers if need be. And someone had their hand up? Yes, I did. Sorry I'm late. I just want to ask a question. So like, does the scholarship has like um, a specific scope to apply to? Does it have specifics? I'm sorry, what? Does it have like a specific like school to apply to or like we could like apply to as many schools as we want to? You can apply to as many schools as you like. It is through the Common App. Um, we talked about that. My strategy or what I'm recommending students to do and what most of the our, my counterparts, we recommend that students have at least three to five schools. Um, one of the things we talked about with the Jack Kent Cook Scholar because, um, you know, it's really a selective, uh, prestigious scholarship. They are looking for students who possess um, you know, community serve outside of having a higher than average GPA, they're looking at the whole person. So they're looking to see, are you giving back? Um, are you, uh, are you included or involved in any honor society? So we have encouraged students to join PTK. And then we also um, encourage students to consider a selective enrollment or Ivy League school, um, if that's a fit for you. And, and again, we can talk about those things. I know um, a lot of times, especially in our community, um, in, a, in, in, in our black and brown communities, uh, one of the biggest things about an Ivy League school is the fit. Do we want to be the, I mean, the, my, I mean, we're already a minority, but, you know, usually there are very few uh, black and brown students at Ivy League schools. And so that could be, you know, that could be something that we would want to talk about and how, how you feel about that pursuit, um, if that's a, an issue for you. But you know, I, I do, we are recommending that students at least select one selective, in, uh, selective enrollment school um, as part of their application. Any other questions? I have a question. Uh, I have one, please. You can go on. Oh, okay, thank you. Do all of the funds have to go to tuition? I'm saying school, oh. well, there's all, all types of other costs, books and supplies, and there's all other types of stuff that needs to be paid for. It covers that, yeah. Let me, I'm, I got the FAQs here and I know that's one of the questions. I'm gonna read exactly what they say. Um, yeah, it is, it covers um, financial needs. So, um, so if like if you were staying on, on campus, if you decided to stay on campus, they will cover those costs. Um, hold on, let me see, I, I know I saw that. Um, I'm going to find it in here, but yeah, they do cover, they do cover, uh, books and fees. So they cover books and, and fees and, and, uh, and, uh, uh, financial things associated with college. Okay. Thank you. And someone else had a question? Yeah, I had a question about the transfer credit. So if you have credits from high school, like, AP classes or dual credit classes, do those count? As well? No, those are fine because that, I mean, they count toward the, they, they was, they were still from city colleges? Yeah. I mean, they were from your high school that you transferred to city colleges, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, then they would, they would still, they would be okay. As long as you haven't attended another school. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Any other questions? I don't have a question. I have a statement. I've done so. As far as the the community um, involvement, mm -hmm. or civic or community service, so they want this like on some. You got to have some type of way to prove it to them. I, I'm sure. Well, it's on the application. They, you know, they're asking you. I mean, they would they could potentially call and verify, but they're asking you for information in terms of. Uh, what kind of, you know, community service that you've done. Okay. Yeah, so as okay. long as you, you know, if you have a, a contact person or if it was with a, a company, you would put that company name down and, you know, what you did. Okay, I did community service with PTK. That's fine, with as long as, as, long as you can, 
Right. Somebody from PTK will be able to, to verify if it was a standalone community service project, then that would that would count. OK, that's what I need to know. Thank you. You all also need to consider the number of hours that you've also done the community service. So um, if you have not done so already, but can maybe do some from now until maybe even December, increase some hours you know, a one time or two times something um, in the last year or so is not as heavy of community service. So you might want to get an organization that has a little bit more of a robust um, community service outlet for you and not ones that need to still be created. So possibly or potentially looking at like a soup kitchen or a, something that already has a really robust volunteerism in place especially in this fourth quarter, which means you're in the final hour of, you know, trying to get your hours in before applying on to this scholarship, if that makes sense. Thanks, Tiana. I thought I saw that in the, the FAQs. I guess I don't, but just to, um, Barbara, you asking about what they, uh, they cover other aspects. They do, they cover books and fees and, you know, um, and the good thing is, I, I believe if you are, um, uh, you know, a financial aid student, you would you would probably receive that uh, refund back. So that could be good. That's always a plus. That's always a plus. Because you do have to complete a financial aid application. And I don't believe this is the last, this is not a last dollar scholarship, right? Tiana? Do you know? I'm sorry, could you repeat? I'm sorry, one more time. This is not a last dollar scholarship, right? Um, no, not to my knowledge. Yeah, I didn't think so. Okay, any well, other? I have one. What does that mean? You said this is not a last dollar scholarship? So some scholarships, when they say last dollar, they're, they're saying if you, they'll use any pale, any free money that you get, right? Not loans, but they'll use any pale, any grant that you received and then they would be the, they would cover anything left. And oh, the, okay. the Jack King Scholar, the Jack King Cook Scholarship is not, is not framed in that way. So um, it's above and beyond what you would be receiving, right? So they don't, they don't, they don't spend your free money first. Okay, thank you, I didn't know that. Free money, but. Um, so the, the question came up in the chat about credit hours. You need to be transferring by the fall of 2021. The other thing is you cannot have credits outside of city colleges. So regardless of when you've done them or even if you don't choose to use those particular credits, if you have attended any other college outside of city colleges, unfortunately you do not qualify for this particular scholarship. Right. And we said AP credit, those kind of things that you, you know, took in high school, those are fine, but no other college that you attended and then bringing that back to city colleges. All right, any other questions, any comments? I'm excited and um, I'm, I'm hoping to see you guys at the next two workshops so that we can really kind of tear into this thing. Um, and again, you know, it really creates a community. Uh, you know, I hate that we're not on campus uh, because I think these kinds of workshops or, you know, cohort programs really, uh, you really get to know, I really get to know my students because you guys are coming in to see me and we're working on the same thing and we, we, all, we all have a goal in mind. Um, but I'm hoping to, cre to create that kind of environment um, within this virtual space as well. Um, we are here to help and we, you know, we want to make sure that we uh, get you through this process and that, you know, you represent the city colleges. So, uh, you are our best and brightest, and and, and we want to we want to showcase you. Uh, you had a question? Yes, I do have a question. Sure. So um, I, I I'm a bit confused right now because I transferred from Yola to Tr to Truman to take some science classes. So does that mean that I do not qualify for the scholarship? Yeah, if you have transfer transfer credit from another institution, you don't qualify. Uh, they're looking for students who. Um, have only taken classes at one particular school, like, you know, city colleges, or if you were at another college, community college, they would, they don't want any transfer credit. 
Oh, oh okay. So yeah, that would you you would not be qualified. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Was there a question in the chat? Please be sure to look over. Okay, Tiana. Yeah, and, and as Tiana said, please be sure to look over the application before the next workshop. Yes, you need to be familiar with the application, uh, what the application is looking for so you can prepare accordingly. I would definitely say that. Um, we can actually take a look at what it looks like really quickly. Let me have it up. No. Um, I'm also going to send you this packet. You'll get this presentation and this packet of uh, selective enrollment schools for your, uh, you know, for your research purposes. I also included the college scorecard website in the uh, presentation as well. Oh, wait. Just there. This is the actual website. So you can go on to this website and... Oh, wait. Where is the apply button? Apply now. So you would go here, apply now. And I have created an account, so I'll go into my account. But you would create an account. Can everyone see that? You can, can you see it, Tiana? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. I just want to make sure. Um, so like I said, it, there are four parts and it gives you, you know, what you need to do for each. So there's the, the personal information. You will go in and fill in all of these areas. Uh -oh. Academic history. So that's where you would put your uh, history from. Uh, see colleges, supporting information, so your experiences, again, um, extracurricular activity, and you'll just add in those things. They want you to add those things in. And I think somebody had a question about that. So you would do, you know, extracurricular activity, you would put down PTK, and you would, you know, say what kind of uh, responsibilities you conducted. And keep in mind that they are going to put, obviously, they're going to um, make some calls and, and try to, you know, double check or, or make sure that you are saying and doing what you say because it's $40,000, guys. I mean, obviously, they don't want to just give $40,000 a year to anybody that's just making up stuff. So that being said, you know, remember that even if you haven't done so already, you might still have time to join an already robust organization that has, you know, community service in play. I will tell you in 2014, 2014, 2014, an Olive Harvey College student was one of the recipients from, uh, for the Jack Kent Cook Scholarship, Ishmael Ochier is his name, and he ended up going to UIC um, and um, majoring in biology and I will say this, his, his extracurricular activities were very robust. He was also happened to be the valedictorian that particular year, but he was president of PTK. He was um, an officer for the STEM club. He was also doing community service hours, uh, not just through uh, one organization like PTK. He did do that, but he also did them uh, stand alone. So these are some of the things they're clearly looking for if he was a recipient. So just keep those things in mind. And then I heard someone say something about letters of recommendation. The time is now, absolutely, if not already, to start asking professors about letters of recommendation. The type of letter that you're needing for a scholarship like this will need meat and potatoes and not a salad. So you don't yeah. want a little nothingness um, <clears throat> Uh, letter of recommendation. So that being said, you want to uh, schedule an appointment with a professor. This is nothing that is in passing. This is not a real quick text message type of a thing. This is a, you know, uh, good afternoon, Dr. Williams. Um, my name is, here's my student ID number. 
Here is the semester in which I was in your class and the grade I received. Here is my resume, my co-curricular resume, things that I have been doing. I would really love and be honored if you would write me a letter of recommendation for the Jack Kent Cook Scholarship. So making sure you're as detailed as possible, sending them all of the requirements that need to be in that particular letter. I always recommend students to pick a professor in their discipline, things that they are looking to um, major in because that particular professor can speak to your academic skill set and your abilities and that's what looks good on those types of letters. So start that process now. If I were you, I highly recommend that you've already started that again before the next workshop with uh, Dr. Donna Williams. And the other thing is um, when you are, so you're gonna ask somebody for a letter of recommendation, but then you actually send them a link. So you may not even get to see the actual application, I mean the letter. So you wanna make sure that you've given them all the information that they need about you. So there's no guesswork in them giving you a really good uh, recommendation letter. Okay. Um, so back to the application. Quick question, so I quick question. Yeah. Um, Donna, would you also recommend that maybe the professor sends a copy of it to them before linking it, if possible? Yeah, they they can, but I'm just they, that would be good. That would be good. I'm I'm just making the point that. You know, it's not like the old days when they would give you a letter and you'd have the letter and you'd send it to them. They really, they actually submit it electronically. So you do want to make sure that, it, you know, some people don't feel comfortable saying, can you send it to me first, right? Because they're in this application, they'll, they'll ask you who is recommending. You have to give the email address for that person and they actually send a, a, a request for that person to complete a, a recommendation letter. And I think there's something where you can, you can check to, to you give consent to either for the, for you to see it or not see it. But again, you don't want to, you don't want to, you just want to, my point is you want to make sure that the, as you were saying, Tiana, the person has enough information for it to be meat and potatoes. And, you know, because a person is submitting it, you know, not handing it in, you know, in your hand or could be not handed in your hand, that they have everything needed to, to speak highly of you. Um, so back to this application. Oh, somebody had a question? Yes, I do. I'm sorry. Um, so Ms. McCann is saying meat and potatoes, and then I, I also heard you guys say academic resume. So on that academic resume, are, are they wanting, um, should you include your grades? No, she said, a res well, when I, I do a letter of curricular. Right. That is so, like just showing the extracurricular activities that you're involved in. Obviously, a professor won't, won't know all the ins and outs of what you're doing outside of their class. So you want to provide them with right. things that are additional to what they might not know, like even an unofficial copy of your transcript. So they could see what your GPA is oh, and or okay. what your uh, grades are looking like. Again, the questions that they're asking and answering about you, you just want for them to put great substance in their yeah. answers and not just like a one-liner or a one-word type of answer. If they don't know it, they can't write it about you, right? So whatever additional yes, information you can provide to them and don't hide it if you need to copy and paste it into the body of the email or send it as an attachment and make sure you let them know in the body of the email what yeah. Uh, information you are providing them with in the event they have additional questions they can always reach out so things of that nature make sure that you're making yourself available for them also with telephone number and email address yeah and I was gonna say I was gonna say Barbara when I do a letter of recommendation for students I do um, I ask for their resume I ask for you know co-curricular like what what activities they and it doesn't have to be a resume per se but I definitely you know want to know what um, what you know what extracurricular activities that the person has been doing so that i can uh i can support that with my own personal experiences with that person okay um so i selected so as i was telling you you can you can you know select different schools so for my i, I was just playing around here i selected north northwestern university um as a school that i want to transfer to so you could do that um you know, you can select other schools, but again, let's do some research on the front end so that you, um, that you are, you know, you, you have information for, uh, 
I mean, you, you have enough information to actually select that school and you feel comfortable selecting that school. One other thing that I wanted, one other resource I wanted to share with you guys, and I'm going to send it to you by, uh, by email, is the College Comparison Worksheet. So this is a live document. You can type in the document, but it allows you to kind of keep information about uh, the schools that you're researching. So using the scorecard, I also put in their College Board, which is another uh, uh, for a platform where you can do some research for schools. Um, and this is a pretty lengthy document. I'm not expecting you to, you know, fill in all the gaps, but I do, um, I would like you to fill in the university information, uh, at least the yearly tuition. So you get a look at how much the tuition is, uh, depending upon the schools that you select, and then um, the application requirements so that we can at least start, we know where we are in terms of um, in terms of applying to the school, okay? Um, you'll also get this by email as well. Um, I don't have anything else. I, 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 Again, I hope I've given you some information to kind of get your feet wet and get us excited about this, this process and, and get us to the finish line in January. So if there are no other questions, we can, um, we can wrap. Thank you very much, Ms. Williams. Thank you so much, Ms. McCann. All of all of Harvey Cotter students can follow up with me. Um, exactly. Yes. And then we can connect you all with who you need to see from the other campuses. And actually what I'll do in the email that I'll send you, I will send you uh, contact information for the directors across the district. That way you can follow up with them. Now, I don't have the PTK um, uh, advisors but you can follow up with the transfer center director to ask about that because I, I would also like to see students um, uh, become members of PTK. Uh, one of the things that I did before I even uh, put this workshop together when I was trying to research, like what do, you know, what do we need to make sure that, that we get selected? Uh, one of the things that from city colleges, and, I'm, I'm, and we're taking this, the example of city colleges, but in general, uh, students who have been selected in the past, as Ms. McCann was saying, it was a PTK student, higher than average GPA, which you guys, you know, you got that already, and then community service. So, uh, you know, the, the no-brainer is PTK. Everyone here qualifies for PTK. Not everybody can, you know, have a robust volunteer uh, uh, resume because maybe you have other things going on, but definitely uh, become a part of PTK. There is a, a fee associated with PTK, but on some campuses, uh, they're able to help you with those fees. Oh, PT is, is Phi Theta Kappa. Phi Theta Kappa, I'm sorry. Phi Theta Kappa is an honor society. Phi Theta Kappa. There it is. So you can look that up and it's, it would be on our website, Phi Theta Kappa. And it's an actual honor, honor society that you, um, that follows you at the four-year. You can also look to see if OMD can help with the fees. Oh, okay, great. Thanks. Also, most of the chapters um, have a web page on, on City Colleges of Chicago site. So if you go to uh, ccc.edu and you pick your particular or specific campus, you will see the contact people. You can also go onto ptk.org and if you look for your school on that actual page, it will show who the advisors are on the, your particular campus. So there's two ways on City Colleges pages you should be able to see um, who your advisors and what the chapters are. And then the second way is actually going to the, the physical website for Phi Theta Kappa and seeing who the advisors are for your school when you put them in. Most times they do try to keep those updated because they're still sending information out to those advisors. I've also added in the chat all of the individuals from the different campuses that are the directors of the transfer center. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can you please tell which campuses help with the PTK or other organization membership fees? Um, so, so I know on, on my campus, I have, to, I, I think we do on my campus, and I'm not sure about any other campus. I, I do know that there's an alumni association that is, uh, you know, they're gearing up to assist students with uh, PTK fees. So it just uh, varies by by campus. But again, we're gonna we do have the we're gonna get you the information or the information is in the chat for the uh, directors across the district. 
Uh, so you can look at the, you can ask the director from your specific dish, uh, campus. All right, anything else? All right, well, have a good day. We'll be here a couple minutes if anybody has any questions. Thank you much, ladies and everybody. Be safe. All right, have a good one. You too, bye-bye. Bye. All right, I think that went well. Thank you for your support, lady. Did you hear me, uh, Tiana?